Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I had my deep fryer out because I made fish and chips the other day, and I wanted to do two separate videos for just the fish and one for just the chips or french fries in this situation. So we're gonna be making this old fashioned french fries. And the amount of ingredients to make french fries are one, two, three. That's it, three ingredients. We need some potatoes, we need some oil, and we need some salt at the end just to give them a little bit of flavoring or any type of seasoning. It doesn't have to be salt, it could be any seasoning you want. You know, your favorite stuff from Trader Joe's, whatever it is, they have all these crazy things now. They have like unicorn seasoning these days, whatever you want. You know, so you're gonna see how quick and easy this is. It's, it's like silly, and you're gonna have some seriously delicious home cut, homemade french fries. So let's go right to the fryer and do it up right. French fries. So the thing you wanna focus on with french fries, or chips, as they call them in the UK, uh, not to be confused with potato chips here, obviously, in the States, uh, will be potatoes. And there's really no other potato you want to use than Idaho or russet potatoes, or baking potatoes. Idaho, russet, baking, it's like a slash between those. They're really all the same thing. And the best way to make a french fry, first of all, make sure that the skin is still on the potatoes. And make sure they're, you know, you scrub them down a little bit. If there's any, like, eyes or anything like that growing on it, or spuds, I should say, those little, like, hard little things, just get them off. But you could slice these with a knife. But the easiest thing is to honestly use a french fry cutter. You see this thing? It's actually super fun. You can get this online. I'll link to where you can get this. And if you like to do french fries or make them, this is going to be the perfect tool for you. So to do this, I'm simply going to put a potato inside and then close the lever here and then literally just use a little bit of force. There we go. Look at this. French fries or chips. And I'm just going to put them in a bowl and then just continue the process with the rest of my potatoes. It's really very simple. You're going to want to use some force here, just like this when you're going with it. And look at that. Perfectly cut french fries. So how many french fries you want is how many potatoes you want to use. This is two potatoes and that's a good amount of french fries as far as I'm concerned for two people. And really that's all I'm doing this for. So, you know, go to town. Look at how perfect these look. That's all I want to do for now. Now I'm going to take this bowl that's housing my, well, soon to be french fries, or I should just say sliced potatoes for now. And I'm going to fill it with cold water and I'm going to let my potatoes rest in the cold water. You can put this in the fridge for a minimum of an hour. We want to, we can go honestly and do this overnight. As long as you have a lid on there, that's fine. Um, and put it in the fridge. But you want to go for at least one hour because right now the starch is all coming out or, or rinsing off of the potato. So don't skip this step. If you're going to know you're going to be making french fries at some point in the day, I'm just going to put a lid on this and pop this in the fridge for a minimum of an hour. And whether that's one hour or four hours or eight hours, that'll be fine. We'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, and about two to three hours or so have passed. I don't know, I lost some track of my potatoes. Hanging out in the water here, you see they retain their color, they won't get an ugly purple type potato color, we don't want that. What I want to do now is drain my potatoes, and I did that by putting a colander in the sink and then pouring the bowl with the potatoes, or I should say the soon to be french fries, uh, through there, so we drained it. And now I'm going to take my bowl again, and then I'm going to take like a dish towel or something like this, and then add the potatoes to it. We want our potatoes to be pretty dry, okay? We don't want it to be super wet here. So the idea is to just kind of gently and delicately, don't squeeze too hard. Just give them a little hug with your dish towel or dish rag. Obviously make sure it's not the same dish rag you'd use to clean the scary parts of your kitchen. Make sure it's nice and clean. And we're just going to let these hang out here to dry while our oil is heating up. And then we're going to be good to go. This is pretty good. We're not going to be seasoning them until the very, very end. And then it'll become like a free-for-all with how you want to season them. Okay, so because I have some extra time here, I want to show you guys how to do the other method, which is the boiling or parboiling method. Now, this method was created by the amazing, amazing J. Kenji Lopez-Alt, who is known for Serious Eats and the Food Lab and is just, you know, in their own league of amazingness. So hats off to J. Kenji Lopez-Alt for this one. What I did is I put a pot of water on the stove. And how much water you're going to put in there is dependent upon how many fries you're going to be making. And then as it's coming to a boil, I'm going to add my sliced potatoes. And by the way, these are cut at about a half inch thick, and that french fry slicer is worth every cent when it comes down to making french fries. And I want to bring this to a boil. 
All right, so the next thing we do is we add about a tablespoon or so, you can do it by eye, of white vinegar. And don't worry, it's not gonna give it a vinegary flavor. And about one to two teaspoons or so of some kosher salt or any kind of salt. I just got some on the stove. If you do want a really nice, crispy, crunchy French fry with like a softer inside, I would suggest boiling it. If you want one that is going to be kind of like a softer French fry all around, but definitely a little bit of still of a crunch on the outside, go for the putting it in cold water and popping it in the fridge for about one to eight hours. But this is definitely gonna be the quicker and slightly crunchier method if you're okay with dealing with some boiling. So after a few moments, it's gonna to begin to boil, obviously. So as soon as that happens, let's lower our temperature down to like the one of the lowest, it'll go two or low. We want it to just be kind of like a gentle simmer boil situation. And then set a timer for 10 minutes because that's how long we want it to go for, no more than that. So it's a little bit more than 10 minutes because we put the potatoes in there uh, while the water was, I, I used the hot water from the sink, put them in there, then I brought it up to a boil, which takes about, you know, depending on your stove, whether you're using electric gas or induction, of course induction's the fastest. That'll take about two to three minutes and then it, once it begins to boil, I lowered the temperature down to two or low, whatever one of your lowest is there. Give it just a nice little gentle boil simmer for 10 minutes. And do you see how it's simmering just like this? This is exactly where the temperature we want to get it down to after it boils. So when we bring it up to that rolling boil and then we start the counter down, as soon as you start the counter, lower it and it should look just like this, you know, a very slight little simmering bubble. That's what we want, not a raging rolling boil. And 10 minutes have passed, so I'm gonna take this off the stove and drain it. Okay, and then I'm going to take my potatoes and I'm gonna lay them out on a paper towel or a dish rag, something of that nature. And then just put them in one layer, it's gonna be a little hot, they're gonna be a little delicate now. And then it's like, let them chill here for about five minutes. And this is just one potato I did for this one, for this version. But you know, obviously the more potatoes, the larger the towel, you could easily fit like up to like three to four potatoes on something of this size. It's not a big deal. And your fries are gonna be very, very pliable at this point. You see this? Pliable. I wouldn't suggest doing anything other than a half inch type of slice for this. And that's why this thing is so fabulous. Look at that, it just goes right through. And now what's happening in this moment is they're kind of drying out, which is exactly what we want to happen. After gently boiling in vinegar and salt, it kind of dries them out once they lay out on the towel for about five minutes. See how it's like steamy, it's kind of coming off of them. I don't know if you can see, but it is. Just let it chill for about five minutes and then it's gonna be ready to fry. And this is what ensures more crispiness to your fry. But some people do prefer a softer French fry. And if that's you, then simply do the first method where you cover the sliced potatoes with some cold water, pop in the fridge for about an hour or eight, well, at least an hour. Or you can just do that parboiling method or the boiling method, whatever, uh, and then just lay it out like this after it's done for a few minutes and then just immediately fry. This is definitely the quicker version and it is the crispier one. Okay, and once they're cooled, after about five minutes, you can gather them into a bowl and then we can fry them. Same exact way as we'd fry the other fries, which I'm about to show you right now. Okay, so the best way, in my opinion, to fry anything is, well, using a deep fryer. And they're actually very, very affordable. You can also totally use a Dutch oven or a saute pan, a pan that has high walls on the side to do this on the stove. Just fill it up halfway with oil. I use either vegetable or canola oil typically to deep fry, never olive oil. But again, a deep fryer for me works best. Plus to come with this little basket. I wanna preheat it to 375 degrees. And I'm gonna have my basket ready to go because I'm gonna put my french fries in there. And it's gonna take about 20 to 25-ish minutes for that oil to heat up. Usually there's an indicator, um, like this will turn green when it's ready to fry. Or you can just check with a thermometer. Okay, my light has just turned green. It might be a little hard to see. So I'm gonna take my fries, well, they're soon to be fries, or I should say my sliced potatoes here, put them in the basket. It puts the potatoes in the basket. And then, simple as this, Put them in that oil. And we're gonna go for about five or so minutes at first, just to let it go and check on it. Okay, and it's been about four to five minutes that I've put these in there, and look, let's check on them. Okay, you see that? These are not quite done just yet. We want them to be a little bit more browned, so you really just wanna keep an eye on it and make sure. Make until we want it like a nice little golden brown situation going on here. But you do see they're becoming a bit like, you know, textured now. That's nice, that's exactly what we want. Okay, and it's been about eight minutes, and now do you see how the fries, or well, now that they're fries, are nice and have like a nice golden brown to them? That's perfect. What we wanna do is we wanna take them out, give them about a minute to just chill, 
and like cool just slightly and then we're gonna put it in again for about another two minutes to give it that extra final crunch factor that's what happens when you double fry something it gives it an extra crunch factor at the very end okay and after our fries have just chilled out for about a minute put them back into the oil for another two minutes and there we go perfect fries of course if you want them a little more done go a little longer so they're more well done. It's up to you, just keep an eye on it. You don't really wanna walk away too far when making French fries. And every vessel you cook this in or deep fry this in is gonna be slightly different. But about 10 minutes all in all is where you're gonna be. Between 10 and 12 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to take my freshly fried potatoes, put it in a paper towel line bowl. And after I put half the amount in there, I like to salt it up a little bit, just a little bit so we get salt everywhere. And then I'll put my remaining fries inside of my little bowl here. Oh, look at that one escaped. Give it a final shake of some salt and voila, french fries. Okay, we need to talk about these french fries. First of all, look at how beautiful they look. Second of all, let's give them a try. I'm... Oh my gosh. I swear, sometimes I'm so goofy with everything. Is, is that okay? Are we gonna, oh, I think we're good. Okay, now let's give them a try. These taste like homemade french fries. Listen, it's a great crunch to them. I mean, it's just one of those things where you're gonna shock yourself. I know, it's just potatoes, but you don't realize, like when you go to a restaurant, I feel like sometimes french fries, is like, it's like a restaurant thing, like I can't make those myself, I have to get the frozen ones. No you don't. Mm, they taste so good. The perfect melt in your mouth, delicious french fry with a nice kind of crispy edge to them. If you want them crispier, just fry them longer, but delicious. Mm. And completely all natural. No weird preservatives on these fries. All right, come back with me in the kitchen so I can finish this video. And there you have it, my friends, french fries. Mm. Guys, these are some seriously good fries. And again, for french fries, the best way to determine a serving size is really one potato per person. You're gonna get about 20 or so french fries out of one potato the way it's sliced. Um, so if it's two people, go for two potatoes. Or if you really wanna not do, you know, be too guilty to have a few, then one could be split between two people. But that's the way I gauge a french fry when I make them. Check out my cookbooks, they're all Instant Pot cookbooks. Um, you can't fry in an Instant Pot like this, so um, this is something a little bit different for you, but just as simple as my Instant Pot cookbooks. And, uh, you know, look at this, a beautiful french fry with, like, it feels like there's skin like on every piece, which I absolutely love. And it's just, just as simple as like ABC, one, two, three, do, re, mi. You know what I mean, say la vie. So go to your uh, little frying mechanism, whether it be a deep fryer or one on the pan, and make some delicious french fries. All my recipes are at pressurelovecooking.com, by the way, you wanna see them run, run the gamut, go and check that out there. Facebook.com slash pressurelovecooking, like that page for any time a new recipe comes out, and at pressurelovecooking on all the other socials like YouTube and Instagram. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time you wanna make a delicious, quick snack that's like a restaurant quality situation going on, but you don't wanna make your teeth clench, well, just slice some, some potatoes and then throw them in the fryer and make them French. Enjoy. Mm.